I am Wesley Phillips, elementary education major, non-traditional freshman at Edward Waters College. I am Daniel Divins, physical education major, senior at Edward Waters College. I am David Thomas, elementary education major, junior at Edward Waters College. And welcome to Judge of the Bill. This is about gentrification and its implications on public school. I wasn't asked the audience to who knows what gentrification is, but let me just get to the definition of it. So, gentrification is the buying and renovation of houses and stores in deteriorated urban neighborhoods by upper or middle income families or individuals, thus improving property values, but often displacing low income families and small businesses. Now, the, the, the gist of it is, it's people coming in from outside communities to a broken down uh, poverty, poverty stricken community, and they're buying properties up and buying things up and then just generating wealth, and that wealth is often going out of that area. So um, that's typically what gentrification is. Next slide, sir. How gentrification is leaving public schools behind. Gentrification over a neighborhood in Washington, D.C. Um, public schools in that area, that specific area of our capital is beginning. It's being diverse, diversified by the schools, arts, but the schools aren't. This drops the enrollment rate and loses funds for schools. Yes, All right, I'm gonna stop right there. Now, <clears throat> now this is what's something you can't stand in and read it. So you always have to preview your material before you get in front of the group. Okay? All right, so that way, that, that way, everything is smooth. You want it nice and smooth. What do you play? Yeah. What I play? You play sports. Yeah, football. Okay, so what position? Linebacker. Okay, so if you if you were linebacker, and you you behind the defensive line, you got the offensive line. You want to make sure everything's smooth, so you see your target, which may be the running back or the quarterback, and you know how you want to tackle them, the way you want to tackle them. You read the offense. The same thing like that. You read it and prepare it, so that way. You don't necessarily have to read it verbatim, but you can just give us key points. It's, it's kind of like the same project. You know the offensive line. You're looking at this scheme and all that kind of stuff. So you know where you're going to tackle. If they go into the right or to the left, you can follow them and get a good tackle or a set. Same thing with this. You just kind of make it nice and smooth. Well, yeah. Well, basically, the article it was talking about um, a specific area in Washington, D.C., and it was discussing how gentrification is hurting the school. It said that gentrification is causing, uh, well, happen is the gentrifers, they'll come into the neighborhood and they'll buy a property in the neighborhood and do what they do with it, but their kids, they won't send them to the neighborhood schools. They send them to private schools and other schools outside of it. So that means the public schools are now losing, they're getting lower enrollment um, and they're losing funds because less kids, less funds you're going to get from the state. So um, that's ended up getting these schools closed. And um, so, like, the reason, so, I mean, we're education majors in a certain type of ways, so of course this is going to affect us all. So like now we get to the reason why we chose. So. Okay, uh, this directly affects EWC students because we are in this community. It is majority of what you would call an impoverished community or uh, uh, Take your uh, time. I want to I want to call it poor, but uh, below the poverty line. Okay. Most people are living and operating in this neighborhood below the poverty line. And when you have uh, companies, uh, corporations, and people come and move into the community, as he explained earlier, and they send their children out to different schools, that's where the, when they break up the funding on each fiscal period, where the funding is going to go, they count, you do a head count, and they send the funding where, where the head count is. Then what also happens is businesses, people bring businesses and they get your other your other sources of income, your day-to-day -day income, they take that income and they send that also elsewhere, which which makes the the, uh, the, the community much much more poor. Then it also affects the education. Then what usually happens is schools shut down until they bring they bring the uh the finances and the heads back, but the only way they're going to bring those children back is what happened is when the the uh, people who are in that the, the community originally living below the poverty line, once they misplace them, when they scatter them out, then that's when they bring their 
you know, bring their children back and, and then pretty much take over uh, the neighborhood uh, through that process, which is called gentrification. But, uh, well, what I wanted to uh, address is that I saw it happen in, in Atlanta in an uh, area called Kirkwood, a part, part, part of area called Kirkwood, where it was a majority black. And it's also right now it's happening in Jacksonville, Florida, in the Springfield area. And, and it, it, it is on the table to happen in this area if we don't wake up and start buying property, start going through our community, right here in this immediate community, right, where they call Newtown and Grand Park area, if we don't start investing our money in black businesses and in, um, into the school, into owning homes and work and, and thrive in this area, then gentrification will take place also here at the college. Because they are planning to have only what 35, only 35 HBCUs by 2035. 30, 35, 35 is the, is the, uh, is the plan. But the thing equal, so we don't need HBCUs. And EWC is a um, perfect example of gentrification because of the, the lots they buying over here by JWJ and the the lot with the fence around it. They supposed to be buying that. And using that for um, dorms for the school, so he doesn't see it as a perfect example of gentrification. I know some of the problems, just a little bit. Some of it. Some of it. If they start seeing the, the, the money elsewhere, the loans, it's community based. So, also, this picture is also oh, yeah. All right. Great explanation. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of And uh, all these people who are doing one more. All right. You got one more slide? Okay. Now, your references. Now, where did you get your information from? What were your references that you used? Uh, three different websites. It's the uh, dictionary.com, just for the definition of justification. And then um, an NS News. I forgot, I'm sorry. But like, I forgot how I did it. But um, it's, it's still late there for it. Okay, well, you got some good resources. You got How Gentrification is Leaving Public Schools Behind, U.S. News, and on the World Report, that's good. Then the definition, like you were saying, dictionary.com, and then Black People. Um, and connect. Okay. Right, Need to wake up. Very good. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Good. Good. Good.